Hello there, it's Michael here to share another daily devotional with you guys. Today we're going to be talking about faith and wisdom. Um, Specifically, we're going to be focusing on David, a man of great faith, one who God said was had a heart after his own. So he's a man after God's own heart. And so he's an awesome example to see what faith looks like in someone who's steadfastly following the Lord. And um, so David had his troubles, he had his mistakes, but today we're going to see how he dealt with that. He dealt with his shortcomings and how he dealt with waiting. And so before we get into it, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this morning. We get to spend in your word, Lord, this morning, this evening, whatever time we're spending in you, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would bless it, Lord, that you would grow us in maturity for you, Lord, that into your image, that we would become better soldiers for your army, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so first off, I want to start off with just a single verse from Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, we read, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. This should be the same fear that we have for studying God's Word, not to take anything for granted and really dig deep to find what the Lord is trying to tell us, not to just brush it off or read it as just a whole passage. No, every single word has been divinely inspired for us each individually and for knowledge and for for reproof and for correction and most importantly for wisdom and instruction. And that's what Proverbs 1, 7 is telling us. So moving forward to a couple chapters and to chapter 3, I want to get into, um, so this is King Solomon and he's He's um, giving uh, some wisdom here. So in chapter 3, we find guidance. The, the title of this chapter is Guidance for the Young. And so it's particularly written towards the young, the, those first starting out in life. They're, they're not really developed in any major sense in any area, so they're right for um, teaching these godly attributes to and so we find in the first portion of this chapter is really dedicated into the mindset of living and so I'll begin in verse 1 my son do not forget my law but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you let not mercy and truth forsake you bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So in verse 3, when we read, let not mercy and truth forsake you, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. This is actually a reference to the Tephilim. And so these would be uh, little things that they would bind around their neck and their chest, and it would have a, a, a scroll inside of it, and it, it would have, they would be a constant reminder that their, their mind is, the thoughts they, they think are to be set upon the Lord, constantly dedicated to Him, and their heart is supposed to be sold out and dedicated to the Lord as well. And so this is just a, it's a reminder. So it's, he's telling that mercy and truth should be bound to our minds and to our hearts and how we think and how we uh, feel, how, how we live our lives should be uh, through mercy and truth, not letting them forsake us. In verse 5 we read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. It sounds like a simple uh, declaration, a simple challenge, but it goes, it's, it's pretty hard for anyone. In fact, we see this kind of same thing repeated several times um, throughout the book of Proverbs in different ways. Um, But a notable example of this is chapter 16 of Proverbs, 
verse 9, and it's kind of a, a different way of putting it. It says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So, as we acknowledge the Lord, as we plan our way, the Lord is the one who's directing our steps. We're to acknowledge him in all we do, and he's the one who directs our path. So we, we don't lean on what we know, what we think works. You see, because when we lean on our own understanding, oftentimes it, it leads to a place which isn't as favorable. See, in the book of Proverbs, we read that the, in, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is death. And so when we think upon our own standards, upon our own understanding, it can lead us into situations which if we had placed it at the feet of the Lord, and allowed him to guide us, would often not lead us to the same portion, the same place. You may be saying, well, wait a second, I put all my faith in the Lord and I get into a situation, uh, more often than not, I, I, I end up in hard spots, spots that aren't comfortable, they aren't fulfilling to me. Why is that? Well, the truth is, on this side of eternity, we're not to be comfortable. We're to be servants, soldiers for Christ, soldiers for the Lord. And soldiers don't have it easy on the battlefield. It's a constant war. In Ephesians, we read that we're in spiritual battles daily and not that they ever end, but it's consistent. And so we have to be ready. We have to put on the whole armor of God and be ready for the fights, the battles that we have daily. But we're also told to have joy within these trials in these battles, knowing that the Lord is the one who strengthened us, and it's not our own self. That should be a sense of peace and security to understand that it isn't relying on our own strength to get us through the day. It's all the Lord. We put our faith wholly in Him. Wrapping it up in Psalm 27, verse 13, we read, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So this is part of a, a, a exuberant declaration of faith from David. And so it's in a time of his life when he's being chased and it seems like everyone's against him. And he, the, the, the whole chapter he's, he's recognizing the Lord's with him with, through all these troubles. He's always with him, but the, his enemies keep coming against him and they're, so they're surrounding him. And at the end of the chapter, he, in verse 12, we read, Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for faultless witnesses have arisen against me, and such as breathe out violence. So he has even false witness risen against him. The last two verses really show David's heart. He would have lost heart. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Final verse. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He repeats it twice to wait. You see, when we truly the situations we truly can see God's grace and his mercy in our lives and when we step back and stop trying to do everything ourselves and we wait upon the Lord we acknowledge him we allow him to direct our paths and we can truly then see when we solely focused on the Lord and what he's doing in our life that's when we can see him moving in our lives we can see what he's doing what he's directing us just as when you're so focused on your phone, on your, you name it, you can't, don't really have any time to think about anything else around you. Say you're focusing on texting a friend and someone's talking to you, you forget, oh, what'd you just say? Exactly. It's the same thing with the, the Lord. When we're not allowing him to speak to us, when we're too focused on our lives, on focusing on our screens, our tablets, anything other than the Word of God and what He's trying to speak to us, how can we expect Him to speak to us personally if we're not listening and ready and waiting upon Him? 
So that's my challenge for you guys this week. Pray that this was a blessing for you guys and that um, you would grow daily in strength in the Lord and that the Lord would use you to reach those around you. God bless.